Yeah, if you remember the second derivative test from calculus one, our calculus one, we were able to tell using those critical numbers and the second derivative, so the critical numbers come in the first derivative, but the second derivative test said, uh, I'll write it up here, all right. So if, uh, so this is from calculus one. If um, f prime of c equals zero, so we've got a, you know, that's our critical number, and f prime, double prime of c is greater than zero, so if we've got those two things, so we've got a critical number, and we've got the second derivative is greater than zero, well, if you remember, second derivative means concave, second derivative greater than zero means concave up, that's what this means. All right, and so I've got <clears throat> first derivative, so I've got a horizontal tangent, and it's concave up at that, <clears throat> so like that. What have I got? Local min, right? So f of c is a local min. And then vice versa, if first derivative equals zero and second derivative, as c is less than zero, well, that's concave down, and so you've got horizontal tangent, concave down, so you've got a little max. <clears throat> okay, so blast from the past there. Well, come to find out, we can use the same sort of <clears throat> logic here um, for our two variable function. This is a one variable f of x function. So if we do two variable function, very similar. Um, now, one, uh, one uh, well, pretty big complication. The only thing about doing a two variable function and doing the second derivative is if you recall, there's more than one second derivative, isn't there? Because we can do the second derivative off of the partial of x, so we, and we can do uh, the partial, so this is the first derivative with respect to x. Well, I can do the second derivative with respect to x, but I could also do the partial of f with respect to x, I could do the second derivative based off of y. And then I also have, I could do the first derivative with respect to y, so I could do Second derivative with respect to y, or could do the second derivative with respect to x. So there's actually four. Now, good news, what do we find out? Usually those two are the, whoops. Usually these two are the same. So, <clears throat> about the only good news there. <laughs> there's four partial, uh, four partial derivatives, four partial second derivatives. If you will. Well, <clears throat> so that complicates things a little bit as far as the second derivative test goes. Um, <clears throat> here's what we do. So for this, here's what we're going to call, we're going to label a, uh, uh, an expression here, call it big D, or just D. <clears throat> and D is going to be, it'll be the uh, partial of f with respect to x, with respect to x again, times partial f with respect to y with respect to y again. So you're going to multiply those two second derivatives and then you're going to subtract and since those two are the same we're essentially multiplying those but um, you can just do one and then square it. <clears throat> and like I said sometimes one, one of those is easier than the other but it doesn't matter. Um, one of those squared. So that's that's going to be D and that's going to be uh, what we use on the second derivative test. So here's the second derivative test for calculus 3 here. <clears throat> so this is the second derivative test but it's um, 4z equals f of xy. All right, so let's suppose f of x a b equals zero and partial of f with respect to y a b <coughs> equals 
zero. So that we've got that critical number, uh, critical point equals zero. And D of AB equals, like we said, that's going to be our uh, little uh, expression over there. D there <clears throat> at AB. Well, there's three possibilities here. If D is greater than zero, so if this calculation turns out to be greater than zero, um, unfortunately you can't just go off of that. If D is greater than zero and F, the second derivative uh, with respect to x, uh, the, uh, partial of f with respect to x, and then <coughs> with respect to x again, if that turns out to be greater than zero, and evaluated in AB, <coughs> if that turns out to be greater than zero, well, what you've got there is uh, basically concave fill up, so you've got a local mean. Well, you can go the other way. If D is greater than zero and that uh, second derivative, the partial of F with respect to X and then with respect to X again, if that's less than zero, <clears throat> then you've got concave down. So that's uh, local. And luckily, there's only one more. The third one is, well, both of these have d greater than zero. Both of those depend on d greater than zero. If d is less than zero, <coughs> then f of a, b is a side point. <coughs> and then, well, I guess there's a fourth one, equals zero. That just doesn't give you any any information at all. Okay. You have to do something else. Hopefully we'll get those right. Alright. <clears throat> so that's that's the second derivative test for two variable functions. So it's like I said, it gets a little more complicated because of the uh, second derivatives. There's four of them, typically speaking. Alright, so let's do one of these, uh, find our uh, local maxes and mins and saddle points if that uh, happens to uh, come up. All right, so let's find the local maxes and mins <clears throat> for f of xy equals 3y squared minus 2y cubed minus 3x squared plus 6xy. It's a fairly complicated function there. So what, what, what do we need to do? Uh, we're going to use the second derivative test here. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, the first part of the second derivative test is like the first part of the second derivative test for one variable. You got to find those critical points. The critical points come first, which again, those are based off of the first partial derivatives. <coughs> so what are the uh, partial derivatives here? Partial respect to x. What is that? that is not right, is it? Yeah, that is right. Okay. All right, so we got negative 6x plus uh, 6y.
Now, this is different than we previously encountered here. How so? Well, notice I've got, it's an xy equation. Previously, the ones we had, we could just solve for x right there. Well, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes it happens like this, all right? So let's go ahead and get our partial with respect to y. <clears throat> so that's uh, 6y minus 6y squared plus 6x. With me there? Everybody okay? Partial doing partials. It's been, been a while, so make sure you're with me here. Set that equal to zero, and again, can't solve it for x or y. I mean, you can, but you won't get a direct answer there, if you will. Well, <clears throat> so what do we do? Well, all you're really going to do is uh, treat that as a system. System of two equations, two unknowns. Solve, solve your system. <clears throat> um, looking like this, I'm just going to do a little substitution method. Uh, if I solve that for uh, y, add 6x and then divide by 6, I get a pretty nice result, y equals x. <clears throat> so I can use my uh, substitution either x or y, but if I choose, uh, choose here, I can substitute Substitute for x, I can substitute, uh, well, it doesn't matter. y equals x, so I can substitute the uh, y to be x in both of those. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Is everybody with me there? Substitute uh, x for the y in the uh, other equation. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so it'd be 6x minus 6x squared plus 6x equals 0. Yeah, so that gives me a one variable equation. Uh, it's 12x minus 6x squared equals 0. <coughs> Factor out of 6x, so that'd be 2 minus 2 minus x. So that's x, 6x equals 0, 2 minus x equals well, that gives me two x values. But these are critical points, and so what do I need to go with my x values? Well, like I said, it's a system, so you need the y values. What's the y value if x is 0? Well, good news, <laughs> y equals x. So if the x is 0, y is 0, and if the x is 2, y is 2. Okay. So those are my critical points here. We've got uh, 0, 0, and 2, 2. <clears throat> so the question are, is, do I have a local min, local max at either one of those? Or the other possibility is a saddle point. <laughs> All right, so that, that's step two here. I'm bored, so... We just have to remember what we did here. Okay. <clears throat> so step two, um, like I said, we need to compute this. Uh, I already erased it here, but <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, see what we got for D. D is F, the partial, uh, second partial uh, derivatives. <clears throat> so what are those? Well, F, the second. So basically, we have to do a partial, two partial L, actually uh, three. Oh, really? So. Anyway, we need to do the partial of F with respect to X and then do the partial again with respect to X. Well, that's just going to be negative six. And then the partial of F of X with respect to Y. <clears throat> so this one with respect to Y would be positive six. And then the other one we need to compute for this. Uh, the computation here is the second uh, one off of the y, so uh, fyy, if you will. Uh, what would that be? 6 minus 12y. Everybody see where I got those? Just doing the partial of y off of this one. Second derivative <coughs> for that one. All right. 
So, uh, get our second derivatives here, that's kind of step two. And so step three then is to evaluate D for our ABs, which <coughs> ABs, um, so let's say this, step three. <coughs> um, step two really is this, get the uh, partial, second partial derivatives. Step three is then evaluate um, D of AB for each critical point. And then we can decide based on our three, three, categ three categories here. All right, so we need to do D, Zero, zero. <clears throat> so my x is uh, zero, my y is zero. Now, good news is two of them are just already numbers. So you got negative six times uh, six minus 12y. So that'd be <clears throat> y is zero, so that'd be six minus zero. So that'd be positive six. Did I get that? Minus, then, uh, the f of x, y squared, that partial derivative. So that would be, there's nothing really to evaluate, we just got to square that. <coughs> so we've got negative 36 minus 36. That is negative 72. What does that mean? Well, going back to our three, I've erased most of them, but <coughs> this, is, this is part C, isn't it? I've got D is less than zero. Well, it doesn't matter what that other part was because if D is less than zero, what do I got? Saddle point, right? This was a saddle point. <clears throat> saddle point. So we don't have a max or again, it's a saddle point. But I do have to do it for 2, 2, if that makes any difference. All right, so that'll be, uh, <clears throat> so again, fx x is just negative 6 times uh, fy y. Well, y in this case is 2, so it's 6 minus 24, which that's going to be uh, negative uh, 18, isn't it? And minus six squared, so that's that's going to give me a positive. One hundred eight minus thirty six, which is positive seventy two. How about that? Aha! So that that's <coughs> again I've erased most of it here, but I've still got two possibilities. It's not going to be a saddle point, but it still could be a local max or a minute, <coughs> just because that's positive doesn't uh, tell me yet what it is. So now I have to look at, uh, what is it I have to look at? F, <coughs> fxx at AB, you know, if you have to. <coughs> In this particular case, uh, AB doesn't really matter because it's always negative six. So here's what I've got. I've got D is greater than zero and I've got fxx that second derivative, <coughs> partial derivative, is less than zero. I believe that was, was that number, was that B? <coughs> Basically what this means is, yeah, you've got um, concave down, local max, F2. So, <coughs> so with that, we're running out of space here. But, so with those two things, um, you have a, uh, there's a uh, local max. At that critical point, two, two. <clears throat> Saddle point, local max. Four, two. Yes? Sound all right? Good with that? 